<coughs> okay, well this, uh, this presentation actually, a bunch of the slides talks fairly generically about asset management and why you do it on the beginning side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the slides to talk to you a little bit about how the village of Frederick used um, their, the process to, to build their system, which is an RGS online um, application that uh, started out in, in CAD and then migrated to GIS and then migrated up to RGS online after the fact. Um, so what, what Frederick wanted to do was be able to access all of their data um, from anywhere in the community. But they, most recently, um, they've lost a couple staff members, and really they're trying to find a way to be more effective with less staff. Um, uh, even though it's a small community, they had five people on staff, and they now have literally two and a half. So they're trying to do twice as much work with half as many staff, and it really allows them to do that more effectively out in the field and actually do all of their, their documentation straight through um, collector and, and those apps. Um, they actually have uh, a few things that they have to manage. They, they manage their, their facilities, their, just their sites as well. Um, they don't have airports, but that's another community that's right next to them. Um, but they do have their sanitary sewer plant. So, so they manage their actual plant inside of their GIS, in, in ArcGIS Online. And what they do is, is they, they manage all of the equipment within the plant. So every motor, um, all of the um, moving parts th that are in the plant physically itself, um, everything that has to be maintained or operated is all managed within that system. Um, so to get to that point, what did they do? Well, they, they first started with an, a, a CAD map. They had a, an engineering company, which I worked for previously, that actually did all of their mapping right within uh, their CAD system form. So then they would supply them with just hard copy maps that they'd keep in the, in the, in, in the um, building and in the, in the different offices. Then they went to um, actually an ArcGIS desktop license, an old one. It was the old 3.0. Um, and what they tried to do with that is try to actually have one of their staff, one of the younger guys in the crews, maintain their, their data through that. Well, they weren't trained very well. They were kind of just throwing the software and they kind of had to learn it on their own. And it wasn't very effective. So at that point, then they went to a, a, a small desktop product, which really, um, didn't do justice, basically it gave them the ability to have the maps and, and view them and maybe um, in some cases they actually put some attribute data to it. Um, and that was okay, but they had to go in the office or in the shop, print out a map, go out in the field, do their hydrant flushing or whatever activity they were doing, write it all down on paper and then go back and hope that somebody would put it into the system. Well, it wasn't happening, so they had to get m better access to it. Um, and then at that point, they decided, well, we don't really have our signs, we don't have our trees, we don't have any of that information. So they went out and GPSed everything. So they hired a, an intern to go out, GPSed everything with a handheld GPS unit, collected all of the, the data. Now they have great data, right? So now they wanted access to it, better access to it. So at that point, then we went to the ArcGIS Online product, and I'm actually going to go to a live demo. I'm going to kick out of here. Um, I'll just go to a different one. So what they have is, a, if, if you're familiar with ArcGIS Online, it's a very basic setup. Um, what we did is we loaded all their maps out here, and um, we loaded them out as, excuse me, my content here, we loaded them out here as services. So um, you can either load GIS data into ArcGIS Online either through zipping your shape files up and loading them that way, which is very, um, uh, very limiting, I guess is the best word for it. You can, what it allows you to do then, you have to use all the, the symbolization and everything that's in ArcGIS Online. Well, if you load it into ArcGIS Desktop first, 
symbolize everything and then push it out as a service, now you're allowed to actually, t it takes all of the, the custom symbolization that you had in the desktop setup and pushes it out there. So all your, you can create a really nice sign map, and I'll show you that in a second, with all the right symbolization and everything, and, and push it out. And on top of that, as, as they maintain things, um, you know, one, one downside to RTS Online is it doesn't do backups, right? So in order to do backups, you have to download the data and actually store a local backup of it. Well, um, what you can do then is you can push data back and forth through to RTS Online through desktop, if you have it. And you know, for most of you, you're, you're more sophisticated. Um, in their case, they don't have their, their desktop license anymore. They haven't maintained it. Well, they still have it, but it's 3.0, so it doesn't interface. Um, but so to, to maintain that, they just they, you know they pay us hourly uh, a few hundred dollars a year to to push data back and forth for them. So. But they literally have everything out here. They have their um, the aerial photography, curb stops, hydrants, parcels. Uh, they have planning layers. You know, for a small community, they have a ton of data and you know, signs, streets. They hit trails. They have a nice little park. I'll show you. Oop. Sorry, I like to move my hands when I'm talking. Um, and so they have a nice little park, and it's got uh, a trail system in it. So they've mapped out each of the different lo layers of the trails, and and actually all the lights to go with it, and all of that. So, you know, for again for a small community, they they've done quite a bit in, with a, a, a GIS system um, using ArcGIS Online. And they also maintain their zoning map out there. So um, again, I'm going to switch over here to maps, and um, oh. Sorry about that. I went to gallery to get a map. So here's your sign inventory. So again, they have all of their signs mapped. All of their signs are have the right correct the correct symbolization that we pulled through from from desktop. If we click on one, we can get the information. You know, it's a stop sign. They haven't, they haven't went to the point of putting in their retro reflectivity stuff yet, um, but that's their, on, their, one, their, uh, on one of their to-do lists. Um, but, you know, everything is set up to edit, so, you know, as they, as they do go out in the, in the field and collect information, they can put in new information, they can put in new signs. And the nice thing about ArcGIS Online is you can collect your data as, you, as you're out there. Um, there's the new little, I don't know if you've seen them, the new little GPS units, they're really cool. Um, Trimble has one that's um, will will tie right to collector and or into your phone for that matter it's by Bluetooth. It'll get you a sub meter accuracy on a good day. I've tested it, and on a good day, it's foot accuracy. Um, which for you know signs, trees, for all those types of inventories, that's that's very uh, acceptable. Um, and and it's and it's easy. You know, for them, they're using their iPhones with collector. To literally do all of their field work and, and maintain all their assets out in the field with it, um, and then they have their, their desktop they, that they go to for you know, their plant and other things. And for their plant, um, one of the one of the other limitations of ArcGIS Online is that you um, have to live with Zoom um, your your map limits. For zooming in and out, um, one way to get around that is to build your own base layers, or use if you, if you have a county that's streaming out your base their base layers, pull that in and adjust it as your base layer, because then then you can zoom right down to looking at you know a pixel in an area versus uh, the actual uh, zoom limits that ArcGIS Online does, um, because the limits are that the the base maps that Esri are, are serving out to you, they're not allowing you to zoom in any further because their base maps simply aren't designed to go in that far. So I um, just want to bring up your sanitary sewer plant here. And, and although their plant is very simple, um, I guess the point is, is that you can map almost anything and put it into a GIS system. And it's being a little slow. <laughs> There we go. So you can 
can see as we slide in here a little bit further, um, and I'll take you in about as far as we can get, which is right there. Um, it's one of my next tasks, actually, next week is to um, load out some better base maps. That county in particular doesn't have, doesn't stream out their data yet. Um, but so I'm going to load out some actual um, the aerial photography in, in, a, in a better um, resolution and and uh, and load that in as as their base layers. The issue is that if you get a lot of people playing around with their maps, um, they can turn off that base layer and click on one of the Esri ones. So then it's gone. You got to fix it again. So you have to teach them how to fix it. Um, and in some cases, you know, depending upon who's using the maps, um, they can or may or may not have those types of uh, capabilities or understanding of, of, of how to do those things. But if I click on one of these, here's a plant item. Um, in this case, it's a pond. It's the drain between the two ponds. Um, you can notice that, you know, some of the data is filled out, some of it's not. The drain, obviously a drain doesn't have a lot of things in it. But if that was a motor, it would actually have, you know, what the motor is, the lubricants, the frequency, the voltage. Um, you know, they literally have uh, everything that they have to track for all of those items. Um, and, you know, to be honest, they're not fully using the capabilities of their, of their treatment plant yet um, for a couple reasons. One of the people that they lost was their plant operator. So their street department guy is actually now their plant operator. So. Um, in the midst of doing all of this and loading it into ArcGIS Online so it's more accessible for them, they lost that second person. So um, He's trying to, to do two jobs and, and he's realistically able to do about a job and a half. But, um, but again, uh, all this information is accessible to them on their iPhones through, through the, collect, the collector app. Um, we did customize a little bit on the collector side, but um, not as much as what at some point they're probably going to want more. Um, and, and this is just one community. I've actually loaded up um, data for four different communities and working on two more right now um, into ArcGIS Online using ArcGIS and Data Collector. Um, so it's it's a it's a extremely easy to use system, and it's it's just uh, especially if you have if you have an SDE already in place and you want to send st staff out with you know um, and they have internet capability. Obviously, you. you um, you know, you, you really want uh, to, to have the access to it. Um, although you can do it disconnected with Collector, but um, it's a, a little bit more of a process as well. Um, the one nice thing, I don't know if, uh, if any of you have seen any of the demos at all from the users conference, but this summer out of the users conference, they showed us a bunch of the new things that are going to come out with ArcGIS Online. Um, and there's going to be a, a work order management system and an interface for that. Um, you know, it's not going to be city works by any means, but it's going to be something that you can utilize with uh, with your with your data and, and start using work order management as well. So, I actually look forward to that because my clients are jumping for joy. They don't, you know, that, that's would great for them if they can assign somebody a, a hydrant to go out and flush. So. <laughs> I guess that's that's my uh, presentation. Uh, any questions? They added everything through the web map. Yes, yes, and 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 again, in their case, they're not streaming any county data. They actually added the, the county data that they wanted to their web map because they don't have any choice. There's they don't stream it out yet. Um, I have Denmark as a client. They st they're streaming all the Brown County data. Um, Newburgh. You're streaming all their data for there, um, so it's uh, it's much easier to stream if you, if you can grab all that information and push it out there, because um, then obviously you don't have to maintain anything either. So, yes. Um, so as they add new things, um, for the most part, we do their maintenance of their data. Um, in some cases, they're doing their own, but. Um, for the most part, we, we do all of their maintenance. Because um, at, at, you know, at the point that we loaded most of these out there, that those nice GPS units weren't there for using the collector. So um, now some of them will start taking advantage of that. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm loading up one right now for Shawano Lake Sanitary District, and they're going to purchase one of those units and do their own maintenance. 